Yeah. Tucker's got his race war niche. They're going to be more reasonable. I'm sure at 10 p.m., Laura Ingram is not talking wildly about, like, making up things to sort of, um, you know, scare white people. In 10 p.m., it's dark out. It's very scary. Now, for almost 250 years, our economy has been breathing quite well, Joe. It thrived and it grew into a juggernaut by recognizing a basic principle that the economic system should reward people for hard work. When you kill that incentive to work, to show up every day, to create, you kill the very thing that drove the prosperity that we enjoy today. Can you pause it for just one second? Should we just abolish passive income then? Like, if it's supposed to be hard work? Listen, the bottom line is, we should be abolishing the ability to pass money down to your heirs because right there, what better example of what she's talking about? You know, if if the idea that you're giving somebody 140 bucks a month for food disincentivizes them to create things at work, this is very creative stuff. Like, and a lot of other these jobs are so fulfilling. Um, but if that, if 140 bucks, can you imagine what? $1.4 million does to someone's creativity? I mean, she sounds like she just endorsed a 100% estate tax. There's actually a thread that went viral today about this guy saying, I took acid and then started getting uh, uh, honest with myself about money. And he, it's all this, um, this struggle for meaning in a life where his mom gave him $100,000 to just start out. And he's like, well, this is weird. Cause, like, we thought we had to work for a living. It like completely messed him up. And, I mean, this is... and. And, and yes, passive income is horrible. Like, how would you feel inspired to go work if your stocks were just simply rising every year? We need to, a capital gains taxes needs to be at 95%. I think that's what she's saying. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to be in the game, but if you actually get cash from that, uh, those passive investments, it's going to stifle creativity. But that seems to be a weird argument, but it gets weirder, ladies and gentlemen that we enjoy today. The left has always resented middle-class workers living the American dream. They do things like drive pickup trucks, they own guns, they have big families. They're proudly patriotic. That's so the they intend to drive up the cost of oh, everything yeah. we buy and everywhere we travel and then expect you to thank them for it. After all, they know how to spend your money better than you do. The coming tax avalanche on businesses will simply mean that those businesses are going to pass along their higher operating costs to consumers. It's already happening. Pause it. When we're effectively getting taxed on... Anybody in business knows that um, taxes are not uh, operating costs. They're just the, they're fixed costs, not a function of uh, operating. Sales taxes are, are passed through, but corporate taxes, no. And the way that you can avoid corporate taxes, incidentally, is by reinvesting in your business. That money is tax-free. It's spent on a business expense. So... Did prices go down when uh, we had those big tax breaks for uh, corporations under Trump? They oddly did not. Huh. That is very strange. One would imagine that such tax cuts like that would create some type of deflationary pressure because uh, pricing and taxes is so one-to-one. -one. It's very strange. When we're effectively getting taxed on everything, a child care tax credit, that's not going to make much of a difference. And speaking mm. of the children, nice try. universal pre-K is also in the bill. I'm all for educating our youth, but, but really educating them, not brainwashing toddlers with racist drivel. Oh, there you we think go. that can't happen in preschool? Guess again. Randy Weingarten's union has an anti-racist reading list that includes picture books for four-year-olds. Here's what they want your kids learning. The cops shot him because he was black. Cops stick up for each other, and they don't like black men. We can't always count on cops to do what's right. The good news is that Republicans, even the fools who support the phony infrastructure bill, yep, are kidding. united against this wild expansion of government spending and controls. The last time Republicans were this united against a Democrat cram down was back in 2009 against Obamacare. 
And of course, we all remember what happened. They went on to flip Congress in 2010 midterms as a result. And the Democrats already seem to know that that day's coming, which is why they're rushing right now to get it all through. Because it may be their last chance in a while, at least. I mean, Republicans never rush to get anything through. Republicans never rush to get anything through. They passed legislation when they were in power, and now Democrats are trying to do it. Also, very telling, very telling how she's responding to universal pre-K. Right. It's shocking. Like Randy he, Weingarten, uh, she brings up the proposal. She's talking about taxation for the entire segment. And then when it gets to that, you know how, how you know, salient that kind of idea is going to be and how it's going to resonate with people because she can't argue anything. She has to pick a same random Same with the child for, tax care, a, yeah. a, a tax credit. Like they're trying to figure out how do they convince people that universal pre-K is going to be bad. And they cannot, they, I mean, really, it's basically, they're just going to lean on this idea of, like, somehow your kids are going to be indoctrinated uh, uh, by by black people, essentially, is really the argument that she's making. Um, and then it's inevitable and, that Republicans will win, but, like, that was because they waged an effective campaign on Obamacare, which was not as substantial and simple as it should be. They're not going to be able to do that with... They, they, they might. They, they might win the midterms, but it's not going to be the same thing like government takeover of health care, and it's already so convoluted and people don't understand it. No, if there's universal pre-K that's passed, that's going to be felt by people, and it's simple and it's easy. I, I think I will say this. I do think the Democrats are uh, feeling that they need to poop now or get off the, um, the bidet, as it were. Um, Jesus uh, Christ, dude. <laughs> um, well, no, the idea is they need to get this done because there's a very good chance that they're going to lose their majorities. I mean, frankly, you know, it could happen any day with the age of uh, folks in the Senate. Why are they pooping um, onto the bidet? <laughs> well, I'm talking about the bidet attachment on your toilet. Right. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking, I wasn't going to drop a product name in there, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, cool. Anyways, the point is that they, yes, I think that's true. I think they are rushing us through, and I think it is not going to be necessarily as effective to run against this as it was for uh, Obamacare, because in part, Obamacare didn't roll out for four years uh, a after it was passed. And, you know, to the extent that it helped, um, it certainly helped people on, on Medicaid, to the extent that it helped um, and provided some patient protections for um, for everybody, um the scare tactics would have been quite obvious that it wasn't effective um, had it rolled out quicker. And that's why the Republicans never replaced it. They never replaced it. They had, they had majorities for two years and they couldn't replace it because they didn't have anything to replace it with. And now, oddly enough, the ACA has its highest enrollment in its history in part because of a lot of these subsidies that have come, extra subsidies that have come through the um, the last uh, COVID Relief Act. And so, um, I, you know, the bottom line is they're just going to keep pounding on the race stuff. And this is a perfect example of it. Your chat, you know, they're going to say like, well, corporates, corporations are getting taxed. And so your tax, your 300 bucks a month is not going to be helpful to you. Of course it is. And yes, you might like the fact that you don't have to pay for uh, decent pre-K, but understand they're going to be learning that black people have different experiences than you do. Yeah. And that's a problem. I, I really don't. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it's effective what I, they're doing. I, I think I think it is really narrowly tailored to their specific audience. And it I, I'm not saying that Republicans won't have gains in the midterms, maybe because of this critical race theory, like mobilize yourself on the grassroots and then, you know, from the school board to the state house to the representative to, to, you know, but it'll trickle up in their elections, perhaps. But in terms of targeting universal pre-K and the child tax credit, I don't see that working. Folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really, thank you.